Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and uh, my good buddy Pastor Richard's back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. We're, uh, I didn't mention this before, but four to twelve inches of snow here. I mean, you look cold. Um, you know, <laughs> I've I've been yeah. I got I got my my flannel on, and I got my insulated jacket here. It's getting a little cooler out, but four to twelve inches. I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. Makes me you angry. Know, it's just it's his children's <laughs> podcast. So uh, let's just instead, uh, what do we, what does Jesus say about anger? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, great topic, right? Anger. Um, well, I I don't know about you, but when growing up as a kid, uh, if you have this range of emotions, right, you're either sad on one side or angry on the other, right? Mm. And and I always had this understanding that uh, sadness was okay. I mean, after all, that really really short verse that Jesus wept, right? I mean, the one that mm-hmm. you memorized for bonus points at uh, Bible trivia stuff. Jesus mm-hmm. wept. But on the other side, what about anger? And it was always this perception that anger was somehow uh, sinful and wrong, uh, whereas sadness was okay. Tears are okay. But if you think about it, when it comes to scriptures, it says, "In your anger, do not sin." And uh, we have to acknowledge that uh, Jesus Himself, He was angry at times. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, there, there's, there's also, I mean, human emotions are, are God given every last one of them from, from joy to tears, to anger, uh, to, to all of it. Uh, the, the problem is that our, our sinful compass doesn't always point true North. And so like, it's not even just that, that sadness is okay. I, there are, there are places where Jesus says, do not weep. Like this is not the time for sadness. What's, what's, what are, what are you considering that, that has you this way? Don't you know I'm risen from the dead? Um, and also there are places where it's genuinely time to mourn because I mean, Jesus himself weeps at the tomb of Lazarus. There's also uh, an anger. Um, my old pastor, uh, he told me something that stuck with me. He said, anger is a lot easier to feel than pain. And I think this is one of those places where we sort of turn ours in, in a not so well godly way, because there is a place for sort of a, a godly anger. You, you, you sort of said, be angry and do not sin. And, and you can sort of say, well, I don't know how to do that. But at the same time, it's, it's at least feasible because God would, would direct us towards it. But I wonder how many of the times um, I get angry simply because I don't want to hurt. And I would rather direct that pain outwards than let it hit inwards. I would rather not sacrifice for my neighbor. I would rather I'd rather be the one with the knife. Right. I mean, in the build on what you're saying there, I, I've been told this before, and I think there's there's a lot of truth to this, that anger is what we call a secondary emotion. And hmm. uh, unless, unless you're, what is it, Bruce Banner, right, with the Incredible Hulk, I, there's that line I just remember. I, I'm not into the Marvel. secret cap. I'm always angry. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm always angry. I think. I think generally speaking, most people are not always angry. Anger it comes about. What I mean, there's 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 several results. Right. Uh, injustice can make you angry. Um, pain. You mentioned pain can make you angry. Uh, fear or um, lack of control. Uh, I know mm-hmm. those are just four at the top of my head uh, that come about. And so these anger that comes about. So when we anger, we have to ask the question why, and there are times where where the why is yep I, I should be angry because this is an injustice a sin has been committed or um you know and so forth but but again i think i think that anger as as a response to um sin uh you know i've been angry at funerals i usually get angry at funerals i get angry at sin death and the devil and i would say that that's yeah to be angry is 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 good in that sense because jesus was at the tomb of lazarus and you know he wept and then there's a phrase there that says that he was deeply moved that he snorted at death uh, makes sense, um, but then but then there's a sense where we can take that anger, and we use that anger, and it's a feel for vengeance, right? And not not a redemption from a wrong or uh, anger is in response to sin itself. But then that anger becomes a tool that we use to uh, feel our vengeance and hatred and lashing out. Uh, then that anger definitely becomes a, a wicked tool. Right. It's it's where you're almost directing it uh, because this is one of those places like God had a, a just wrath towards sin but but he doesn't place that on on you or on me he places that on on his son on the cross um there there is a place where the full wrath of god is poured out over all of the sins and injustices and evils and atrocities in the world it, it is on the cross um i want to pull it back off of that cross and continue to direct it at people like not even at the sin itself but at the sinner um because i am I, this is this is maybe where you can start to say you know be angry and do not sin don't don't let that anger attach to the person but but to the sin but that that is where I struggle. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to separate the sinner from from the sin, which makes that old love the sinner, hate the sin uh, thing. It, it's a nice little quip, but how? Right. Well, and, and we we actually were talking about this theme at our men's Bible study this morning. 
and uh, I said something to the effect that, that the majority of our actions, you know, <clears throat> because we are sinner and saint at the same time, uh, simultaneously, this whole Romans 7, the very good I want to do, I, I, I end up not doing, the very evil that I despise, I end up what, you know, and so forth. Uh, and so our, our, our motions and our motives are always mixed, you know, and so we're simultaneously doing uh, two things at the same time. So, so perhaps maybe we start off with, you know, a righteous anger, an anger that's not derivative of, of mankind, but a, 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 an anger that is, is in conjunction with God's will, that this is sinful, this is wrong. And then that can give way immediately towards vengeance, you know, and so simultaneously, then I have this righteous anger towards an injustice that happened. And then I have my own attitude of wanting to create vengeance and, and equal the scales and get uh, retribution for something. And they intertwine and, and sometimes to, to un, un mix those two agendas of, of what's righteous and what's unrighteous, it gets just sticky. And so it's best for us when that anger happens uh, to beat our chest and say, you know, Lord, I'm upset. And then we say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Uh, Lord, have mercy on me and my neighbor. And this whole situation that just brings me to anger and uh, commend it to you. There's something to that because, I mean, there, there's a place where where uh, the father's anger uh, has, has an off switch, so to speak. Jesus says it is finished. And that, that means the wrath of God is poured out. That off switch, no more wrath. I don't have that. Like I, it's right. still pretty easy to get me hot again over something that I thought I had processed and, and, you know, worked my way through. Um, and so instead of just pretending that I do, um, or even just wanting to be like God, uh, which I, I hear is a sin, um, it, we can actually take it back to the same place. And, and like you said, beat our breast, which is really simply to say, I want to take my wrath to the same place the father does take it to the cross. Um, because mine can't produce, um, this was, this is where you're kind of going too, but, but my anger can't produce the righteousness of God, but but his did. Yeah. Well, I was just, I was just thinking back as you're talking, I was just thinking back last night, I was driving my pickup and moving some stuff around and, and I had a trailer and I'm just going along and, and all of a sudden this car just came zooming past me as fast as they could. And they pulled in front of me and I've told myself over the years, just, you know, eighth commandment, eighth commandment, eighth commandment, Richard, come on. So there might be an emergency, something that, you know, that they have to get to Maybe There's a health emergency and they pulled right around me and only to turn the blinker on and take a left. And all of a sudden I'm like, Jeez. no. And then, and then all of a sudden I went from this compassion to eighth commandment to then rage wanting to what, you know, with my, my Ford F-150 come right behind them and, and honk. And it's, and it's just like, oh my goodness. It's just, it's just, boy, we need Jesus. We need Christ so bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately yeah, what you said about this, this, this anger um, that the wrath of God is fulfilled in Christ totally poured out on Jesus and so that uh, that wrath is not poured out on me. Uh, God be praised. Amen. Oh, and this is this is it. Then it, it it stops being the question of whether or not you should have anger. But like, where do you take it? Where did, where does it get directed? Um, because in a perfect world, if anger is a secondary emotion, if there is no more sin, there will be no more anger. So like, we can we can talk about you know hypothetical, or we can talk about the resurrection when when all of that is said and done. But before today, when you are angry, where do you take it? Right. Right. Well, it's the on and off switch. Like you said, I think it was brilliant, mm -hmm. right? You know, Jesus, right? Uh, there's no condemnation in Jesus for a sin. Uh, it is finished. The wrath of God is finished in Christ. Uh, it's all finished. Christ, period. Yeah. Bring it there. Pastor Richard, thanks so much. Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. Take care, my friend.